Hi everybody, this is Joe from Shutter Speak Photography. Today I'm going to show you how to take a sky from AI Sky Replacement in Luminar, add it to an image, and then use that same sky as a reflection in the water. Now, there's two ways you can do this. You can do this with a custom sky that you load on your own, and that's going to work on Windows or a Mac. If you just want to use one of the skies that are built into Luminar, you can do that also, but only on a PC, only on a Windows machine can't do that on a Mac. I'm going to show you how to do that with one of the built-in skies that come with Luminar on a PC. So, let's get started. Okay, so we have a nice image here of mountain range by a kind of a quiet lake with a clear blue sky. Not much going on in this image, kind of boring, but we're going to make this a little more interesting. So, Right off the bat, what we're going to do is we're going to go right here to the Creative tab. We're going to go to Sky Replacement, AI Sky Replacement, and I'm going to select Blue Sky 3. This is one of the preloaded skies that comes with Luminar. Now, again, this technique we can only do with Windows. If you were on a Mac, you would have to go down here to load Custom Sky Image and use your own Custom Sky. Okay, but since we're on a PC, we're going to use Blue Sky 3 and the AI has loaded it perfectly. I don't really think we need to change anything. And now I'm going to go up here to Layers, and I'm going to add that reflection. So click on Layers, click on this plus sign right here, say Add New Image Layer, and when I do that, this opens up a dialog box, but mine's preloaded to where the Skylum sky textures are because I've been in this directory before, it remembers that I've been here, so it opened this directory for me. So it's located at, on your C drive, in the Programs File directory, inside Skylum, Luminar 4, Profiles, Sky Textures. And that's where you're going to see all of these skies. Okay, so I'm just going to choose Blue Sky 3, because that's the sky that we used. And I'm going to say Open. Okay, it preloaded that sky for me, or loaded it, and I'm now going to say Layer Transform. Click on Layer Transform, and now I need to flip this upside down because it's a reflection, so I'm going to use this tool right here to flip the image. Now you're going to notice once I put my mouse over the image, it becomes a hand, indicating that I can drag this image. Okay, so I'm going to drag it down to right about there. Okay, so it kind of matches the top of this little mountain range here. I don't want to move it up to here because that wouldn't make sense. Okay, the, you see how the clouds here are kind of at the top of this mountain range. So we, want, we kind of want to reflect in our ref <laughs> reflect in our reflection the location of these clouds in relationship to where the reflection of the mountain range would be. Okay, so I'm going to put that right there and I'm going to say done. Okay, so now we kind of aligned as best we can. Ooh, I think I'm going to need to move this just a little bit. It's just a little bit out of alignment. Let me fix that. That looks better. Click Done. Okay, so now we've aligned our clouds with where we think they should be in relationship to the reflection on the mountains. So now we need to make this look like a realistic reflection. Now you're not going to believe how easy this is to do. So all we need to do is using blend modes, we're going to go right up here to blend and we're going to change the blend mode from normal to soft light. Look at that. Now there are some other blend modes we could have used and I'll show you. We could have used overlay. That would have worked but it doesn't look as nice. Soft light definitely works better and hard light's just way too much. So we're going to choose soft light and that looks really nice. Now you see we have some problems here. You can see the line right here of where our sky texture starts. And you can see we have a reflection down in here. That It's not bad, but we're going to clean this up now. We don't want any reflections in the mountain range here of clouds. That doesn't make sense. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to click on Edit Mask. And I'm going to choose the brush. And now I have the brush tool up. 
on my screen, I'm going to change opacity of the brush to 100. And now I'm just going to start painting on my tablet where I want the reflection to appear. And as you see, as I paint, and you could do this with the mouse also, I'm using a tablet, but you could do this with the mouse. You see, as I paint, the reflections appear in the water. Anywhere else where I'm not painting, those reflections aren't going to be. So it's creating a mask for me in just the area that I want it. Okay, so now I can go up here to mask. And if I click on this little eye right here, it's going to show me exactly where my mask is. Anything in red is the mask. Now I can clean this up a little bit, make it a little nicer. I'm going to make the tool smaller by using the bracket key. And I'm going to fill this all in. There we go. Right to there. It doesn't have to be perfect, but we'll get it fairly close. That looks nice. Make the tool a little bigger. Make sure everything's filled in. That looks pretty good. And now to shut that off, I just click on the eyeball again. Okay, and there it is. So now the cloud reflection here matches what's there. Everything looks pretty good. No clouds in the mountain range where there shouldn't be. This looks nice. Now I can change the opacity so I can see the, through the cloud layer a little bit more and let a little bit of more of the water come through. I'll lower that down to about 79%. That looks nice. Okay, and now anything I do with the Essentials tab or the Creative tab is now only going to affect this layer right here of the water. And just to show you, I'm going to go over to Light and I'll just show you. Well, let's use Exposure. If I bring it all the way down, you see it disappears or all the way up. It overexposes. And you see it's only affecting that area where the water is. Just double click exposure to reset it. And that looks pretty good. So what I want to do is I'm going to go to structure, AI structure. Now if I move this slider up, it's going to give me more details. If I move it down, it does the opposite and it gives me less details. So I want to blur the clouds a little bit in the water. So I'm going to bring this down and you see, I'm just going to bring it down all the way to show you what it does. So look just down here at the detail of the clouds. And now we're going to shut it off. And now look down here. You see the detail? I don't want that much detail because it's a reflection. It doesn't make sense. I'll turn this back on. And I'm going to bring this up to about negative 50 or so just to take some of the details out of the reflection in the water because they really shouldn't be there. This looks pretty nice. And I think I'm done with this now here. So I'm going to go back to layers click on layers and I'm going to click the plus sign again and I'm going to say create stamped layer. By creating a stamped layer what it's doing is it's taking the layer that we created with the reflection and the layer that contained the original image with the augmented sky or the AI sky and it's merged them now into one layer. So now if I go to essentials any changes I make will affect the entire image. So I'm going to go to Landscape Enhancer and I'm going to give a little Foliage Enhancer there. That looks nice. And just to show you, if I go to Exposure, you see how now this affects the entire image. Okay, double click on Exposure. That's just fine the way it is. Maybe we can do a little AI Enhance. Uh, that might look nice. Let's see. Not bad. We're not going to use the Sky Enhancer because we've already done that. We don't seem to have any problem with noise, but we could add a little noise reduction if we felt like we needed it right there. That will affect the entire image. And now we can go back over to the Creative tab. We can use AI Augmented Sky, and maybe we will add in, uh, well, let's add in some birds. Birds 3. And they're probably behind these clouds. You don't see them right now. There they are. They just popped in. Okay. Um, so I'm going to place these. Okay, I'm going to take them and we'll move them over here. And now I'm going to make them a little bit smaller. They're a little too big. That, that looks yeah, a little too small. Make them a little bigger so they look a little closer. That looks nice. And now amount. Just going to lower so they look a little further away. 
click on place again, and there they are. I can now go over to say my essentials tab again, maybe vignette, maybe add a little vignetting in, uh, darken those corners up a little bit and pull the eye into the center. And at that point, I'd say we're just about done. So just to go over what we did, just with a few mouse clicks, we changed the sky, we added a reflection using one of Luminar's built-in skies. We added in some birds and we took this image from a pretty boring, pretty empty landscape to something kind of fun and much, much better, much more interesting image than what we started out with. So I hope you enjoyed that. Uh, hope you felt that it was quick and easy. And if you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments below. Okay, everybody, thanks for watching. If you felt that that video helped you out, do me a favor and help me out by hitting the subscribe button. Also hit like and hit the bell uh, so that you get notifications of future videos. That would help me out a lot and I sure would appreciate it. So thanks for watching and I hope you enjoyed it. Have a great day.